Hello and welcome in our first book. Nadifa Mohammed uh, wrote about her father's childhood journey across Africa um, and uh, in a very poignant manner and uh, obviously uh, in a different era that was the 1930s and 40s. Uh, she's come back now and writing about another book uh, which goes back to her Somalian origins and the 1980s and more to do with her time and or specifically the time after she left the country and settled in England, am I right? Yes. Nadifa, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. So, uh, I, I wish I could speak more about your first book, that's Black Mamba Boy, and uh, but just tell us a little bit about why that title, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I understand there is a connect between... Yes, uh, there is. Um, it's a translation of my father's nickname, mm -hmm. um, which his mother gave him, and she gave it to him because um, this Black Mamba snake approached her when she was pregnant with him, and she took that as a sign of blessing. And that the and, and, and that the strength of the snake would remain with the that the, that the snake which could have killed her and, mm -hmm. and her child had decided instead to save them well not save them but spare them mm -hmm. and um, in that maybe in that first test her and her child had survived and they were to be tested many more times in their lives right so tell us about the second book I mean uh, you've gone back to Somalia but yes. for a specific period that's uh, in the late 80s yes and it's actually inspired by the same grandmother mm -hmm. my father's mother and um, we left Somalia in 86 and she was bed bound and when the war broke out she was left um, abandoned in her house for a few for a period of time we don't actually know exactly how long and she was rescued but it made me think about all of the other people we left behind and what it was to um, to be trapped in this state which was collapsing all around you but you were still trying to live your your normal life and the life you expected to have and then the war broke out and that became impossible. Right, and, and uh, how does the story progress, I mean, to the extent that you can talk about it? Yes, um, well it follows the lives of three characters. One of them is Filson and she's a soldier in the government's uh, army. Uh, the second is Daqa. Do, do you have a lot of women soldiers then in the Somali Not a government? lot, but there were some. Uh, the government was trying to reorder Somali society in lots of different ways. Mm -hmm. So the roles of women and men were changing, uh, but it wasn't they, the army wasn't full of women. Then the second character is Dago, who's a 10-year-old, 9-year-old little girl who is an orphan and is sleeping rough in the streets of Hargeisa and surviving by herself. Then there's Kausa, who is loosely based on my grandmother, mm -hmm. and she is an old stalwart of the city. She was born there and raised there and has seen every change happen to it. So sh I think her character really kind of e examines what's happened to the country. Right, and 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 uh, what what's the take? I mean, what can one take away from this? I mean, I, I can I, I'm sure I can see a story of resilience here. Yes, and also confusion, also human weakness, and what's interesting as well is that um, people aren't heroic because they're in a war. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're still ordinary people with frailties and you know their own concerns. The war can be there, but the mind might be somewhere else. And what I found really fascinating is that. Um, how much people try and pretend it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Their concerns are still on their family relationships, um, their, their own regrets and their own feelings of sadness, separate to the war. People are not, you know, reformed or um, completely uh, transformed by um, the conflict that's coming in from the outside, but it's as, that as internal one might conflict. From outside. Exactly, that, that's what I imagine because when you see conflicts, you see people completely engulfed in them as refugees and as you know as perpetrators of violence. But it's interesting to think about actually wh what are they thinking, and maybe it's not what we assume. Right, and and how did you research go about doing the research for this book? Um, by interviewing people, uh, interviewed my mother to begin with, and then different family members and I also go to the Hargeisa Book Fair which is in Somaliland, northern mm -hmm. Somalia, every two years and I always use that as an opportunity to talk to people and to do research. So it's those stories really that the book is based on. And how do people, uh, uh, like your uh, like friends, maybe relatives from Somalia, see your attempt to write the second book and the first one? Well they're intrigued. Um, there's In Somaliland there's a real culture of poetry. Mm. So people respect the written word or the spoken word as it was in the past and, and your ability to turn a good phrase is also very highly um, valued. So they're supportive um, and people also use it as an opportunity to, to tell you what they think the reality of the situation was. So it's, it's part of a dynamic conversation. 
Right. And uh, I, uh, I mean, you're still young and you've chosen two books and themes which are uh, centered around your homeland in yes. many ways. Uh, is that something that you feel you're going to stick to in the future? Not necessarily. I think this, my next book will be set in London mm -hmm. and I'm excited to, to be writing about London. But um, I don't know really. I think uh, you're, you're driven by urges and um, ideas that come pretty much out of the blue. So I'm, I'm open-minded about what I do. Yeah. So if I were to ask you, I mean, what, what would be the central driving force behind uh, the writing of these books? Was it the theme that was in your mind and has influenced you and uh, your family? Or yeah, I think it's, uh, no, it's stories that I've been told by my family members that like have a hook, that kind of cling, in, cling on to me for some reason. And you don't know why some do and some don't, but it's um, it, they're images that form in your mind and then don't leave you and demand attention and then you, you give that, that, that idea and that scene attention and then that leads you to a next, the next one and the next one and the next one. Right. But it starts with these stories that are about people that are close to me. Right. So you've obviously examined the, the, the individuals uh, in this conflict ridden yeah. period or world. Uh, what's your own sense of uh, Somalia today and where would you like to see it go? Um, I think Somaliland really is really um, doing something interesting. It's, it's broken away but it's unrecognized. So. Um, everything that happens there is um, is from the energy of the own of its own people. They drive the changes, um, and it's a great place. It's a it's an inspiring place. The rest of Somalia is still um, trying trying to gain stability. Mogadishu has changed a lot in the last two years. Lots of people are going back. There's a property boom there, but um, there's still a long way to go for people to be able to live calm, uh, decent and uh, valuable lives. Okay. And, and, and my sort of supplement to that question was, what are young Somalians looking forward to if, if, if the answer to that is different? From I think for many, I think the simple word would be peace. Mm -hmm. Peace, I think for women, a sense that their, their bodies are their own and can't be abused by other people. Um, economic growth, there's a huge um, exodus of Somalis abroad and if there were jobs and um, incomes to be had in Somalia, they would stay. And also just, uh, I think people also want to, to live their own lives for freedom. Right, so freedom, peace, and very powerful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. quite simple things. Yeah, yeah, and, in, and I think fascinatingly sort of contextualized it with the individual at somewhere yeah. in the center of all of this. Yes. Look forward to reading your next book. Can you, what's it going to be called and when can we expect it? Oh, I don't know the title yet. And I don't know when it'll be written. <laughs> so, <laughs> over the next few years. Okay. And the second one? That's called The Orchard of Lost Souls, and it'll be published in India very soon. Right. Thank you very much. For Thank you. With us. Thank you.